Welcome back to the arcade. Uh, today we're going to revisit GORF. Now this is my GORF dedicated upright. Um, I got this, uh, I don't remember the exact year, but I'm pretty sure it was around 2001. So I've had this a good 20 years. Um, and it's been fairly dependable over the years. I've, I've had a couple problems with the boards. Uh, not too long ago, you see me go through three board sets and and uh, fixed a couple of the uh, RAM boards. And one time before, I had a bad pattern board. And you know, normal normal things that goes wrong with a GORF. I've rebuilt the power supply. I rebuilt the monitor years ago. Um, and it hasn't had that many hours on it since I rebuilt the monitor. And the monitor looks good for the most part, but I noticed when I turned it on, did you just see that? Uh, it has developed what I call a nervous tick. Actually, what it's doing is, this is a Wells Gardner 4600. And uh, the Wells Gardner 4600 has a capacitor, which is not in the cap kit. And um, the capacitor is, let's see, I wrote it down here somewhere. Okay, I found it. Uh, the capacitor is C621, and it's on the, the main deflection board or the main chassis. Uh, and it's a 0.1 microfarad at 1.5 kilovolts, plus or minus 20%. It's a paper cap, and uh, they're obsolete now, so you have to replace it with a polyester film cap. I don't have any right now, so I'm going to have to place an order. So I'm going to go ahead and order a couple of those because I also have a, a Frogger project that I put a cap kit in. And I don't remember if I've replaced that cap on that Frogger. I do have a Pac-Man that has a 4600 in it. And I do remember having to replace the cap on, on the Pac-Man. So I know the one in the Pac-Man has been done. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and get a filter capacitor because it has never been changed. And with the age of the monitor in the game, I figured since I had to board out, and it's kind of a little bit of a pain to get out, uh, I figured I'd go ahead and put a, a filter capacitor in it too, which is a 330 microfarad at 250 volt. So that might be a subject for a future video. I'm going to have to order those parts because um, I don't have them. But anyway, what I was going to do now in this video before I discovered that, um, well, let me go ahead and see if you recognize it. Let me go ahead and coin the game up. Put a quarter in or a token. And see if you can recognize what's wrong. Whoops, I gotta put another quarter in. Have you spotted it yet? No, the game is playing fine. I'll give you a hint. It's nothing to do with the gameplay. And actually, the monitor is looking fine right now. It's warmed up a little bit, but every now and then it will jump because of that paper cap is shorting out and it's in the kind of in the high voltage section when it gets real bad you can hear a, a you can hear high voltage arc when it shorts but it hasn't got that bad yet but it's one of them things you need to nip in the bud before you let it get that far Okay, so you just did it then. When it starts getting worse, it'll it'll start jumping a lot lot quicker. 
And then you can actually hear the tick, the high voltage tick. But we're going to take care of that. Okay, I'm just going to get blown up. Have you noticed the problem? The joystick. Only one side is lighting up. It's got two light bulbs in it. Two uh, number 73 bulbs, which are... Okay, hurry up and get blowed up. Okay, well, in the joystick, it has two light bulbs, and those light bulbs uh, are number 73 bulbs, which is a 14 volt bulb. Uh, the wattage is 1.12, and the amps is a 0 0.08 amps. The base is a WB 1.5. And the shape is a T1.5. So it is a wedge bulb, like a 555 bulb, like you would find in, a, in the coin doors of many games, and also in pinball machines. Only it's about half the size of a 555. It's a, it's a small bulb. Okay, well, when I first got this game 20 years ago, I bought a box of them. And... I tried to uh, put them in, and the screws, it's got two screws on this side, two screws on this side, and one screw up on the top that hold the right and the left plastic joystick uh, halves on, and they screw into a metal shaft. Well, the screws had rusted in to that metal shaft, and I remember I, I was about to strip uh, the head of the bolt off, it had a Allen head security bit that you used. And I don't remember ever getting it off, but I, I did find a post that I made on the, um, on Clove back in 2010 where somebody was looking for what size bulb goes in the Gorf joystick. And that's when I answered the, the and told them that it, that it was a 73 bulb and that I had wrote on that post that I had changed mine a couple years uh, well actually I said a few years ago and that was in 2010 so I obviously must have replaced the bulbs at one time but I don't remember I thought for sure that uh, one of the screws had rusted in, and, and that's why I only had one bulb working, because I never got it apart to put the bulb in, but maybe I did. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find out if these screws are stuck. If they're not, then I must have already broke them loose and got them apart before. So let me go ahead and set up, put some light on the subject. I had to turn the lights down in order to shoot the picture, because... Gorf has a bad glare. I even uh, unscrewed the bulbs out of the marquee and, and the, back, uh, the back piece up here. And I still had ambient light in the arcade here reflecting on, onto the glass. So Gorf is a bad game for, for glare. It's just the way it's designed. But anyway, all right, let me go ahead and set up and uh, let's get that joystick apart. Okay, well, according to the manual, all five of these screws should be um, an eighth of an inch security bit. And um, they're 10 32nd by 3 8 hex button head screw, tamper proof Allen key. Okay, well I've already checked, and the four in, that holds the, the main part of the sides on here, two on this side and two on this side, they're correct. 
but somebody has changed one up top here and this one has got a T T20 Thorex security bit uh, screw in it. I'm sure it's the same size thread and everything. Uh, this one has a brass insert in one half uh, that it goes into and uh, the other four just or threaded into the uh, actual metal shaft. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to take one side off and leave one side on and uh, see if I can't um, replace the bulb on this side without having to take it all apart at one time. If I have to, I'll take the other two off and we'll just, you know, pull both halves off and because I don't remember the the, the trigger switch assembly is also the same assembly that the two sockets are on uh, and I don't think they they screw into anything I think they just slide into the one half well both halves of the uh, of the plastic housing I think that's how they mount in there but we're gonna find out so first I'm gonna take the T20 Thorax security bit and let's see if I can get this top screw out Yeah, I believe that's coming out no problem. And it's not really that rusty. It's a little rusty, but uh, it does have thread lock on them. Okay, now let me get my 1 8 Allen security bit here and let's see if we can get these loose. Now this one comes out no problem so far. one down. Uh, no problem on this side. If I remember right, it's been a long time, but I think it was on on the right side, the, the top one here was the one that I had trouble with before. But if I did actually change these, then uh, I must have broke them loose. I was prepared because I, I went and got a new can of PB Blaster and if you do have screws that are stuck, usually what happens is threads rust into the shaft. And if you can get just one of them out, the, the, the uh, threads go all the way through the shaft and the shaft is hollow inside. So you can take your PB blaster, if you got the kind that's got the little straw on it there, you can when you get one of the screws out, you can put it in there and give it a little blast and it'll blast inside and it should be able to coat those threads. Because otherwise, you know, you, if, if they're tight against the plastic, there's no way you can get in, any lubricant in there. So uh, it would be hard to do anything with it. So, all right, we got those two out. So let's see if this should come right off here. And this is just a plastic insert right here. All right, the trigger came out. Okay. Now these right here, uh, they make different ones for different games. I think Satan Hollow has a different one. Tron has one of its own. They're, they're all the same, the sticks are the same, except Satan's Hollow, I think, has the translucent red. And, of course, Tron has the translucent uh, blue. But uh, they're, they're all basically the same stick. Okay. Well, it looks like that was the one to take loose because uh, it does have screws right here. Let me see. I don't think I have my flashlight out here. Let me 
I used the one on my telephone here. Maybe you can see. It looks like it has two Phillips head screws right here. And if you take those screws out, I guess this whole trigger switch and the, and the light sockets come out. Um, and this is interesting. Here's the light socket. There's no bulb in it. There's a bulb in this side right here, and that's the one that's lighting up. But I wonder what happened to the bulb in this side. The only place it could have went if it came out would be to fall down the shaft right there. Hmm. Now that's strange. Okay, well, I might be able to get by without taking this side off. I can probably take uh, a little pair of force snips uh, or skinning needle nose pliers and pull this one out. And uh, I don't know about this one right here. Okay. Let me go ahead and... Uh, I couldn't find, I know I, I bought a box of them probably 20 years ago, and I, I couldn't find them. You ever ever buy stuff and put it away and hide it from yourself and you can't find it? Well, I do that all the time. So I went to the auto parts store, and I bought three Long Life Sylvania number 73s. I imagine they use these in instrument panels for automotive use. So... Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to get one out. i just show you how tiny these things are. Look how tiny that bulb is. I don't know if I have a 555 handy here to compare it by. Let me see. I might have one of them old ones that I... No, I think I threw all those away that I took out of my Star Trek The Next Generation pinball and I didn't put the other ones away. But, you know what a 555 looks like. And it looks just like that except this is half or maybe even a third of the size. Okay, well... Let's see if it'll go in. I think it goes in this way. Or does it go in the other way? Okay. Uh, let me put you on hold here a minute and I'm going to have to get my magnifying glasses on and I'm going to have to look at that. Maybe there's something wrong with that socket and that might be why there's no bulb in it. So let me take a look and I'll be right back. Okay, well it turns out it felt like the bulb went in okay. I just had to look and make sure the orientation of, of uh, how it went in there. So, I got the new bulb in this side, but I haven't messed with this one yet. So, I want to do a comparison. Uh, first, let me turn the game on and let's see if the light comes on. Well, that's strange. Now that one comes on and this one don't. Okay, loose connection. Of course you are. Oh. 
Okay, I can't pull the trigger now since I put it together. I wanted to see what it looked like with the two bulbs in it. So, uh, hmm. So I have to put the trigger back in. Insert toy. Silent door. Insert toy. I am a door feeling empire. Silent door. Okay. I am a door feeling empire. Got it back together. Now I need some coins. Let me just. Okay, player button. Okay, player button. All right. Let me cut the lights off here. Well, they look like they're the same brightness. Some galactic defender view our space audit. So, well, they look okay. Okay, let me cut you off, Gorf. Alright, well, I could just put the screws back in it and we'd be done. But I do want to clean the trigger switch, even though it's working fine. I'll put a little deoxid and uh, I'll clean that. But before I do that, something else I want to try. How would LEDs be in there? They would certainly last longer than the bulbs. So, I placed an order from superbrightleds.com and this is what I got. I got two types of LEDs. This one here is a natural white and this one here is I think a cool white. It just says 4000K. But I think that's cool white. They're both a little different. This one is more or less like on a PC board and it's got three LEDs on it. One on the end and one on each side. And uh, that's all this one says. This one here actually looks like, a, like the bulb. I'm sure it's plastic, not glass, but it's got the same shape but it's only got one LED in the end of it and uh, but it says it's a 360 degree beam angle so uh, the other one might just put a, a dot on here and this one here might be more like a bulb so uh, tell you what let's do let's uh, just pull this off again. And let's start with this uh, 400K one. And here's what it looks like. It's got a 
probably a cob LED has probably got you know a bunch of little LEDs within that circle it's got one on the end and one on each side and it's like a, a little PC board wafer with uh, little traces on there instead of a wire so let me take the bulb out that I just put in and that thing went got in pretty good here I'll have to get a pair of pliers to get them out. Okay. I ain't never got what I want. Here it is. I knew I'd laid them out here. Okay, well, it came out and went somewhere. Don't know where it went, but it went somewhere. I'll never find that little booger. All right. Let me go ahead and put this in. All right. Ah, there it is, right underneath the joystick. Okay, the trigger is stuck on the other side, so that's good. Let me see if I can get it back together again. Okay, back together. I am Cut the lights back off. Whoops. Coin up. And let's start a game. Alright, well that looks pretty good. It's brighter than the bulb. The camera looks over bright, but in person it actually looks real good. Okay. I like that. But let's go ahead and try the other one. Let's go ahead and try one of these because this is a 360 degree beam. This one here looks like the bulb, except it's, you can tell it's plastic, and it just has one LED on the end. But the thing is, it sits in there like this, so even though if it's 360 degree, it's going to be shining up instead of out. Inside, it looks like it's got a resistor and a diode. That's probably so it'll don't it don't doesn't matter which way you put it in if it's running on DC. And of course the resistor is to uh, cut the voltage down for the diode so it doesn't overdrive the, the diode. That's usually what they're for. Okay. Let me cut the game back off and let's carefully take it apart again. Let's see if I get, yeah, that one came out pretty good. 
All right. Let's see if this one fit. Felt good going in. And get this in the right slot. Okay. Alright, let's try the test again. Okay, player button. And see what we come up with. That's what I was afraid of. It's either not working or you can't see it because it's shining straight up at the top. Alright, let me take it off here. Alright, it's not even working. Alright. Maybe it is sensitive to being uh, the direction you put it in. Let me flip it around and see if that makes a difference. Alright. Before I put the cover back on, let's just see if it lights up. Okay, it does light up. I guess it just wasn't in there very good. Okay. Well, that doesn't look very good. Because it's only lighting the top edge. It's not lighting down here at all. And it's, it's not as bright as, as the other one. Okay. Well, that's that. That one is a fail. Okay. All right, well... That one's a failure, but this one actually looked pretty good. So let me put that in and let me try the other one in the other side. We were having a little issue with that one and I'm wondering if the polarity matters on these. It's got the same thing. I might have just been lucky when I put it in. This has what looks like a resistor on this side, surface mount, and this one has a surface mount. It's probably a diode. So that's what I'm thinking. All right. Well, I got a 50-50 chance of putting it in the right way, or a 50-50 chance of putting it in the wrong way. Okay, I got it in there, and yes, polarity, the direction you put it in does matter, because I put it in and it was wrong, so I had to pull it out and pull it, put it back in. Um, and when I, the reason I couldn't get it in was I either, <laughs> I thought I took the bulb out, but I must didn't take it out, because when I put the light on it, it still it had a bulb in it, unless that was the bulb from this other side, somehow had gotten over here and wedged on top of that one. It couldn't be though. I don't know, I must have just thought I pulled it out and it slipped off. Anyway, so I had to grip it with these four snips a little bit tighter and when I tried to pull it out the bulb busted. So I had to fish the base of the the bulb out of the socket and I had a mess there. So anyway, I didn't get that on film, sorry. Anyway, I got it all straighted away now, so uh, 
only thing left to do now is I'm going to take my burnishing tool here and I'm going to put a little bit of deoxid on it. Don't take much. And I'm going to put it between the contacts here. I'm just going to clean this contact here on the trigger button. It's nothing but a leaf switch, just like any other button. Just putting it in between the contacts and pushing it together with just a little bit of pressure so it makes contact. And uh, this burnishing tool is, it, it looks smooth, but it, it, it has, it's like micro fine uh, sandpaper, only it's metal. So it, it works very well. Okay, so that should be done. The trigger is still in. So let's go ahead and slide this back on. And before we put the screws back in it, let's turn it on and see if it works. If not, we'll have to pull it back apart and see what's going on with it. All right. Yeah, I like that a lot better than the bulbs. That's a whole lot better. I know the camera exaggerates the brightness, but it's it's nice and red, and it's only got that small little column in the middle, which with the the natural bulbs in there, the, the regular incandescent bulbs, you know, you have much, a much more defined area in the middle. So uh, yeah, I like that. All right. So I think that was a success. Now we got to put the screws back in it. So um, now I forgot which which ones was which. Let's see. Yeah, we didn't put the 360 ones in. We put the uh, 
a 4000K, number 74. This is the part number. If you go to superbrightleds.com, 74-NWHP3. Uh, it's a 9 to 14 volt DC, 4000K LED. So that's, that's the one I recommend. I, I like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the screws back in it. And before tightening them up. Yeah, that's it. And get them all started first. You never want to put one screw in and tighten it down all the way because you may need a little wiggle room to get that last one started. That goes about anything that you're putting back together. All right, this one has the, the thorax. And now that I got, this is the last one. They don't need to be tight. Just snug them up. If you over tighten this top one, you run the risk of, of spinning that, uh, that brass insert that has the threads in it on that. Now this one here, you can tighten it down if you want to, but you can still crack the plastic. So you don't want to do that. So just snug it up. But uh, you're not going to hurt the threads, but you'll hurt the plastic. So just go ahead and screw it in. And then when it bottoms out, just snug it up. Right. there we have it we are done just clean up the mess here blow that glass off there. A little, little bit of glass from where I bo broke the bulb. The bub, as the legend would say at TNT, the bub. The bub. Okay. Well, that concludes this video. Uh, for anybody that's never seen inside of the, the handle of the joystick or didn't know how it come apart, maybe it can be some help to you. And if you tired of replacing those blown out incandescent bulbs, although <laughs> evidently I've only done it one time in the last 20 years, which, you know, I guess it ain't bad. Can't complain. Um, so it's not like they blow out all the time. I guess if the game was on location, uh, who knows, it lasts about as long as any light bulb, and especially a bulb that flashes on and off, I guess is have more wear and tear than a bulb that's on steady. But um, anyway, that's going to do it for this little repair, which now we have to order those parts the caps for the monitor and dig into the monitor so uh, if you want to see that be sure to subscribe to my channel that way you won't miss me pulling the chassis out of this and uh, replacing those caps and uh, we'll take care of that little what I call the nervous tick 
and replace that uh, capacitor. And while we're at it, we're going to put a uh, the main filter capacitor for the power supply of the monitor. And that's in our Wells Garner 4600. So, um, all right. Well, be sure you leave your comments. Have you ever put LED bulbs in your Gorf joystick handle? Uh, would you put uh, LEDs in it? Do you like the looks of them? I, like I say, the, uh, the camera doesn't give a very good representation, but in person it lights the, the little red squares in this insert here and it makes them more vivid, more red, and uh, it lights it up a lot brighter than, than the incandescent bulbs. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of like it. So, all right, well, that's all for this one. Just been another little arcade fix. Have you had your arcade fix today?